the Indian High Commissioner called on the Lankan Speaker today. According to a tweet, India appreciated the Parliament's role in upholding democracy and constitutional framework, especially at this crucial juncture. India also conveyed that it will continue to be supportive of democracy, stability and economic recovery in Sri Lanka. All right, uh, India very clear on our stand there. We say that we support the Sri Lankan people and that our sympathies are with them and that our focus is on the democracy, stability and economic recovery in Sri Lanka. We know that India has already given about $3.8 billion to Sri Lanka and now we're joined by Abhishek Jha for more on this. Uh, very good morning to you, Abhishek. Um, now, the Indian High Commission this morning has uh, said that and according to a tweet, uh, you know, they've appreciated the parliament's role in upholding democracy. How is India viewing the latest developments taking place in Sri Lanka? Read the presidential elections that are coming up there. Uh, it looks like that after this uh, turmoil of last week, at least there has been uh, some sort of direction in which Sri Lankan polity is moving currently after the resignation of Gotabaya Rajpakse. We have seen Rani Vikram Singh as a constitutional state uh, has been elected as a president who will be uh, interim for the interim time period until the uh, full-fledged president is elected by the uh, political parties there. Uh, the Speaker of the House is, has also convened the parliament and we can uh, be a little hopeful that a consensus leader would emerge uh, from this meeting of parliamentarians and uh, we'll be able to see a more stable uh, politics of Sri Lanka in the days to come. Uh, so this is something that has, that has given sense of relief to uh, Sri Lanka's neighbor also and other uh, institutions who were trying to help Sri Lanka like uh, Indian uh, like International Monetary Fund who has uh, their officials and technical teams uh, still in Sri Lanka in finance ministry of Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka's uh, uh, federal bank so they would be now in a position to talk to certain authorities with a with a sense of uh, uh, more uh, uh, you know decision making ability uh, in order to have a bailout package or financial assistance or uh, what could be the way forward where Sri Lankan economy could be revived in a long-term manner. Meanwhile, Indian High Commissioner's meeting with the Speaker uh, is in a way, because we know that the Speaker is, uh, uh, is currently in charge of most of the key political decisions that is happening there. He has convened the Parliament there, uh, or he will be in a very pivotal uh, position where uh, he will, uh, uh, he will uh, facilitate the election of a new leader of Sri Lanka who will be the President. Uh, after Gotabaya Rajpakse's term is over. Uh, we'll have to also see whether or not Raj, uh, uh, Mahinda Rajpakse will be in a race for, to be elected as a president uh, because he does not have enough of his own party member. But we know that uh, since he has been able to facilitate uh, Gotabaya Rajpakse's, uh, uh, you know, fleeing the, the, Sri, Lankan, uh, the uh, Sri Lanka, so probably there might be some loyalist faction uh, in, uh, in Gotabaya Rajpakse's party who may support uh, Ranil Vikram Singh as the next candidate. Uh, but we'll have to see how the politics of the Sri Lanka develop. Uh, Sajid Prem Dasa, Dasa, who has been the opposition leader, but who does not have enough of parliamentarian in his support, has also uh, said that he is he's one of the front runners uh, for the post of president. Uh, we'll have to see who actually emerges out from this crisis as a, as a leader who has support and confidence of not only the people of Sri Lanka, but also uh, the political uh, class of Sri Lankan. All right, Abhishek, we'll leave it at that. I have a feeling we'll find out very soon.